Doctor, I have topped the class in my exams this time. What? You topped the class? Well, I will believe that only when I see your report card. Chuan, you never believe me. You are indeed a doubting Thomas. A female version of it. Hello, my friends. Uncle Francis, good afternoon. Good afternoon, children. I thought I heard you say doubting Thomas. I call Joanne a female doubting Thomas because she's not ready to believe that I topped the class. She says she'll only believe if I showed her my report card. Why not, Joan? Jim is a smart boy and I believe he has topped the class if he's saying so. Well done, Jim. Congratulations. I believe it and I'm sure Joan does too. By the way, does any one of you know how the phrase Doubting Thomas originated? No, Uncle Francis. In the evening, please remind me to tell you the story of St. Thomas the Apostle. Then you will understand how that phrase originated. Great! We'll be there after our studies. So, bye for now. See you two in the evening at the park. Where do I start? You are going to tell us how the phrase Doubting Thomas originated. Well, Thomas, also called Didymus, was an apostle of Jesus. After Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to his apostles while they were assembled in a room. Unfortunately, Thomas was not amongst them that day, and when he came back... What's wrong? You look as if you have seen a ghost. Not a ghost, but we have seen our master in flesh and blood. Seen the master? What are you saying, Peter? Yes, Thomas. Jesus was with us an hour ago. He even spoke to us. Our beloved master, he is indeed alive. What? No, I won't believe it. Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger in those scars and my hand in his side. I'm not going to believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors. And this time, Thomas was with them. Jesus came and stood among them. Thomas, come here. Thomas, put your finger here. And look at my hands, then reach out to your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. My Lord and my God, I'm so sorry. Do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me? Then, Uncle Francis, why is Thomas considered a saint when he doubted Jesus? Praise God that Thomas doubted. Perhaps it happened for our sakes, because we are people who have to see and even touch to believe. I am sure many of us would have wondered if the disciples had really seen Jesus, or whether it was their blind faith that made them believe so. To think of it, you're right, Uncle Francis. After this incident, Thomas never doubted Jesus again. He touched and was touched indeed. He went on to preach the word of God with great zeal. When he saw that Jesus had risen from the dead, it made his faith even more strong. So you see, the right response to doubt can lead to deep belief. Thomas was a good apostle, always eager to serve Jesus. In the Gospel of John, we see his zeal in the incident about the death of Lazarus. Lazarus is dead, but let us go to him. How can we go back to Bethany? That is in Judea. Yes, they will kill us all. 
That is for sure. The last time we went there, some of the people almost stoned our master. Calm down. Let us also go with him, even if we have to die. But didn't he run away with the other disciples when Jesus was being crucified? Yes, Jim, he did run away. In fact, in the Bible, you will find that God chooses people who would be considered weak. As St. Paul writes in his first letter to the Corinthians, God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. Then there is hope for people like me. Of course, Joan. Thomas was weak like you and me, but his heart was filled with great love for Jesus. He was indeed interested in learning from him. I can imagine what Thomas must have been as a young boy. But Master, will God really send the Savior to free us from slavery? Enough, Thomas. I'm really tired of your questions. If you doubt what I'm saying, please leave the class. Silence, everybody. Let us continue with the lesson. Thomas, why do you have to question everything the Master says? I don't doubt anything he says, Hesea. I only want to understand it clearly. I want to go beyond the surface and know the truth. I respect that, Thomas. What more I can say? But surely you are different from the rest of us. We find the scriptures so boring while you want to know more. I don't know why, but the promise of a Messiah really interests me a lot. I hope that one day you will find someone who will be ready to clear all your doubts with love and affection. Thank you, Hesea. I believe I will. In our Lord Jesus, Thomas indeed found the perfect teacher, one who understood his deep zeal to learn more about God. There is this incident in the Bible where we see Jesus comforting his disciples after finishing his last meal with them. Let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Even if I die, I will come back and take you to be with me. All of you, you are going to join me. Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Uncle Francis, what happened to Thomas after Jesus ascended into heaven? Well, after the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles and empowered them, Thomas and Bartholomew were sent to Parthia, which is modern Iran today, and India. Thomas is traditionally believed to have landed at Kundungalur in Kerala, where there was a Jewish community at that time. He started about seven churches there. In fact, one can still find a large number of natives along the Malabar coast who trace the origin of their faith to St. Thomas. St. Thomas touched thousands of people from all walks of life when he was in India. In accordance to apostolic customs, Thomas appointed the teachers and elders who are reported to be the earliest ministry of the Malabar Church. Thomas next proceeded overland to the Coromandel Coast and preached in what is now the Madras area. There, he converted a local king and many other people. He later visited the Kingdom of Mazdai in southern India, where the queen, her son, and other relatives of the local king 
started believing in Jesus and became Christians. This made the king of Mazdai very furious, and he condemned Thomas to die. Horrible death. Yes, indeed. So now I am sure your doubts about Thomas are set to rest. In the end, this brave apostle showed that his faith in Jesus was so strong that he died for him. Wow, that was a great story about a great man. Thank you for the story, Uncle. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Uncle. <laughs>